Things were going for about half of their retail value. Well, that's not enough. It's got to so. go for a quarter. That's what I'm up for. Anyway, I'm also up for discussing the wine for October from the Classic Series, the Wine of the Month Club, 2017. And now, don't thank me. And don't gush over this, but <laughs> we, we're having a Pollo Loco for our staff. Oh, time. my God. It's so uh, good. Is that great? I love it. You know, not all <laughs> Pollo Locos are created the same. The one near me isn't very good, you know. Well, okay, uh, now, what's the big quiz is, well, uh, did look we it up. I looked it up. What do you got? Well, this is... Uh, this 40 is, years ago. This is October really funny. 77. October 1977. The red wine was Calloway Petite Syrah. Really? $6.75 a bottle. That was the well, most expensive wine that he had ever the, done. Was the Temecula version the of The Temecula version of Calloway. And I remember that wine vividly because it was one of the inkiest, blackest, most densely concentrated wine I have ever seen and tasted in my life at that time. It was 75, actually. It was a vintage. And your dad is writing about it. It's so funny because this is a very, very big concentrated wine, but it has some elegance. No, I'm sorry, Paul. It had no elegance no, whatsoever. I remember, the, I remember the wine, actually. Well, I remember the German winemaker. He was big on Petit Syrah, too. He well, loved Well, he loves Petit Syrah and Zinfandel, and I think he took three bottles of wine and squeezed them into one. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, this wine was Was that Eli Calloway stuff at that time? That, Eli Calloway owned the winery. Sure, his first vintage was, what, 69, 68, you know? And this was 75. Oh, well, he hadn't even been in business for 10 years. But this guy then went on to be the winemaker at Renaissance. Oh, well, then that, that and, explains it And that it all. explains it, doesn't <laughs> it? <laughs> anyway, it was really... And, and, the, and the white wine, how about... What, what, okay, oh. nobody pots your feeling it's not there. In the microphone. Oh, I, I see. And the white wine was really bizarre. It was a white Cote de Vin, too. When's the last, wow. When was the last time you saw well, one the of the only those? one I even know about is uh, Hubert's, and that's the... La Via Ferrum, and it's just not that great. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, I don't know. I never tasted one. I no. never even knew they made one. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so this is, um, those are fun wines. Uh, but I remember my dad liked Petit Sera. He used to feature, oh, yeah, there was no, a I couple know. that he featured. Oh, he really did. The Parducci Petit Sera yeah. 77 was out of this mm -hmm. world. That was a great bottle. Okay, wine. so this Sin Mancha is, uh, now the, the label is something that we created because the family winery, uh, Andrew Noble is his name, uh, this is his family's winery, and uh, the way it works wow. in America, if you want to be able to ship wine to certain states, you know, the brand has to be something you control, blah, 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 blah. So his juice, his family winery, just, man, is this like loaded with fruit? Gorgeous oh, wine. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and it's so classically. And I, you know, it's funny, I, you know, you, you taste his wine and you forget him and you taste him again, you go, right. oh, yeah, I remember this mm -hmm. now, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. This has such a fabulous soil component. I mean, on, on smell, I would guess it would be Bordeaux. I really would. I would say, oh, this really? is... Really? Well, yeah, let's, let's smell it. So I mean, the very Bordeaux-like. The cork will tell you uh, the family. It's Chilean fine wine, the Aguirre family. The Aguirre family, yeah. Uh, they're, they're... And uh, that's the brand of the wine. Sin Mancha means without stains. And, of course, cleverly, how clever I am, put a stain on the label. Wow. Well, I, I wouldn't want to stain that comment. I'd like to abstain from that. Uh, this is, you know, I keep wanting to smell it. You know? It keeps like effus effusiveness. But it has this beautiful kind of fresh earthiness to it that is so Bordeaux-like. Along with the fruit. Yeah, really, really nice. I mean, eighteen ninety-nine on the shelf, seven ninety-nine reorder price. I'm doing a ninety-six, man. This, wine's, 96 this, wine, this wine's amazing. You know, uh, we were in Napa last week, the week before, two weeks ago. Uh, nobody's counting, but go ahead. Um, had a great, great lunch at uh, Trincaro. Oh, really? They're great. Oh, you got a restaurant there? Uh, no, it's not. I, I guess it's not to the public. It's it's this hospitality center. You die over the kitchen. Oh, I'm sure I would. And there's five private chefs there, and they just host people. Well, Fetzer did the same thing. They don't have a restaurant there, but they got a kitchen that, that, that that's unbelievable. And a, and a huge dining room. Probably could seat, well, I don't know. I've been there in years, but probably could seat 50, 60 people, maybe even 100 it's it was really special. So this is a you know this was really fun. This is a really uh, nice a wine. fourteen. I can smell the grapefruits come from here. Yeah, I know. It's but great. she brought me the wine. It's a brand new rep. It's epic, uh, wines and spirits. And I'm like, she goes, yeah, you can you can feature this uh, you know at uh, at uh, you know twelve dollars. I'm like, what? I go, come on, because the front line of the wine we suggest it's fifteen dollars on the shelf minimum, and you can get more for six ninety nine. I was freaking out. No, Actually, it's fourteen nine is not right. It, and this is classic marble, right? Well, I don't know. 
don't know. I mean, it's 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 got some nice. Um... Here's what I liked about it. It's not like, I mean, it's there's a lot of grapefruit, right? Right. But the weight of it's not so bad. It's right. It's not bad. It's, it's nicely light on the tongue. Well, it's not damp. Right. Some of those some of those Marlboro wines can get a little damp because it's a cool area, and and what that dampness signifies when you taste it in especially Sauvignon Blanc is that it came from a cooler area and the grapes didn't ripen enough, or not. But this this is definitely ripe. I mean. You, I'm so impressed with this it's being a 14. Now they're six months ahead of us too, so not only a four, it's like a 14 and a half. Right, it exactly. Was 13 and a half, really. Yeah, so it's three and a half years old, and it's and, doing uh, really well. The color's yeah, great, but the acidity, you see, is what really shines in it. these wines. Now, so this is uh, the north side of the South Island, <laughs> uh, or the north side, south side of the North Island. No, it's the north side of the South <laughs> Island because Mar Marlboro is the north side of the South Island, and Martinboro, which is just across the isthmus, is the south side of the North Island. <laughs> which intrigues me to no end because it's, the wines are so different. They are different. They are very, very different. And I, but I think part of that is mar winemaking style, too, because, you know, um, Marlboro has been around for a lot longer. Anyway, $14.99 on the shelf, $6.99 reorder price is stupid. It's stupid price. Oh, it's Wairu, too. So it's even a little more specific than Marlboro. Right, right, and um, there's a frog on the label. Yeah, but I think, I, and I think, for me. I think, it's, yeah, me too. I think it's a little, I think it's a little uh, warmer area there, and that's why the, 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 you don't have that kind of damp sort of uh, flavor. We had that. Uh, uh, I had a winemaker, and you got to watch this video. I haven't edited it yet. It's um, it was Lone Dog or Dog Wolf or something. I don't know what it was the, the best New Zealand wines, bar none, I've ever tasted. What was it? Dog, what was the, what was the, uh, no, no, what was the, the, the varietal? Pinot Noir. Oh, Pinot Noir. Was it from o o Otago, Otago, no, Otago, or whatever it's Marlboro called? Marlboro and some specific district. Wow, Marlboro's. interesting. And I couldn't believe this wine. And it, he, he was biodynamic and all that stuff, which isn't the source necessarily of the character. It's just his passion for the wines and what he did in the vineyard was. Well, was I mean, you know. <laughs> so we're, those are going to come out. Now this, okay, so here, here's one of the things I noticed that, Trincaro, which you know is the original Sutter Home, right? You know Bob Trincaro, blah blah, and he's got all these brands. One of the brands he has is a bourbon called oh, Amador. I had no idea. Okay, he buys Kentucky bourbon and he ages it in wine barrels. Oh my God! It's like, and then you got the the wine guys who age their wine in bourbon barrels. That's why I brought it up. Oh, that's right. This is Total B or whatever it's called. Triple yeah, B. Triple B. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the first time I had this, this is the reason I featured because this it's it's coming of age to a certain Ooh, extent. This smells pretty good. Um, I went to a wine tasting down in Orange County, and it was a Paso Robles winery, uh, mm. Sky Sky Hammer Sky, and so he had done this, and I and then right afterwards. Uh, the Aussie Wine Company brought this in. Well, you know, it's interesting because, look, as far as I'm concerned, it's a gimmick. Come on, give me a break. All right. But the fact is, you know, yeah, you don't see. really taste bourbon, that that bourbon-like component, which you would in, in, in a wine that's been aged at length in brand new American oak, not, not French oak. Um, this tastes actually less um, you know, American oaky than most of the other ones. It's Well, you're going to get... The nuances, rather than because this is exactly. this is what we. I guess the bourbon guys would consider this neutral barrels for them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because they got to be toasted. They're not. As oh, toasted of course they're scotch. toasted. No, they're toasted. But the fact is, you don't forget. You age wine in a barrel for a year, maybe two years at the most. You age bourbon for three to four to five years. You know, so the wood is going to actually absorb some of that bourbon. There's no question about that. That's right. Okay. So th so this is. I know it's three months in barrel. I don't know if the whole thing is three months. It says uh, the next level, a portion, a portion of the wine was aged three months. So there were some rules, though, that this, the, the TTB, uh, the feds, when we made this brand, a triple B, aged in bourbon barrels for three, it had to say exactly that. I couldn't put aged in bourbon barrels. I couldn't put three months in bourbon. I, it had to be this text. <laughs> I don't know why. Because someone's got to earn their money to tell you what to do on a label and to protect, don't to protect you get it the consumer. The I don't get it. No, I don't get it. But so this, what you get in the nose is not just oak barrels. You get this bourbon sort of vanilla character. Well, you do get the vanilla. I do get the vanilla out of there, but it's not overpowering and it's not. Oh, I go as agent bourbon barrels. No, of course not. You wouldn't get that. But no. it's delicious wine, 
It, for sixteen ninety nine, it's a great buy. For seventy ninety nine, seven ninety nine, it's, it's a, a great 90, thing. You look like a hero to your friends. Like, what is this stuff? What are you the truth? What are you? The bourbon barrel? Hey, what's going on? Ninety. And by the way, the bourbon in the wine barrel is not so good. <laughs> I mean, I really didn't care for it. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can keep the bourbon. We'll take the barrels. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, I mean, besides recycling barrels now into you know planters and you know this furniture, I mean that's one thing up in Napa now. You all, it, it's gotten so commercial. I don't even really enjoy it. Oh no, I I don't. I it's have really no interest in going to Napa. Really don't I mean, I, I I didn't like going up there twenty years it's ago. Like how many times are you gonna hear the same story? Uh, no, we did go to Hess. We went to Hess's art collection. That was kind of interesting. But then you get this kid, right? There doesn't know crap from Shinola, and he's telling you all about it. And you're looking at him going, dude. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, but that's the one thing. The big craze is now uh, recycled bourbon barrel, I mean, uh, wine barrel furniture, and there's light fixtures, and there's tables, and there's mm -hmm. chairs, and this, you know, they want to overprice this stuff. I was very excited to see this wine Absolutely. on the list because I love this grape, Falangina. I never heard of it until, I don't know, five or six years ago, and then I started, I tasted it. And it was absolutely delicious, you know. And this is from uh, outside of, um, around Naples, right? No. Um, no, I think, I think it's Basilicata. Oh, yeah. Right. It's, southern, it's southern right. Italy. Right. Um, but they also grow it in Sicily, and they grow it in, um, in, um, uh, on, a, on the eastern slope, too, in the, in the heel. What a nose. Uh, yeah. It, it's, you know, so I, I, it is a little different than the Sicilian version of it, which is usually a little brighter, but that's why I was intrigued by this. For one, being able to feature that in the classic series is crazy. Because well, yeah, because these are pretty damn expensive wines. I typically. mean, you got eighteen ninety nine on the shelf. No, it's a little, probably more than that. It's probably closer to 22 or $23. Falangina is very expensive because it's very rare. There's not that much of it. And then it's and then and then it's a chance to taste something that's not part of the mainstream grape. Well, variety. You couldn't get any Sauvignon further Blanc, away. Chardonnay, or no, this is up. no, this is great. I'm Ninety-seven. I like. Yeah, it. I'm, I'm I'm there too. Six ninety-nine. Uh, um, uh, reorder price is fabulous. All kinds of fun things coming out. Of yeah, and that's real floral notes too. I love yeah. the floral notes in here. Cool. So that's our show for today, kids. The classic series, twenty seventeen. My goodness, wow. October. It's already. Très October. intéressant. Mm.